Well guys, here I am in my fortified sweet potato patch over here at Pecan Grove. Now these are the, uh, y'all forgive me if I butcher the name of this, it's a Japanese uh, sweet potato. It's a purple one, uh, purple fle uh, skin, uh, pinkish white colored flesh. It's used in Japanese cuisines uh, from Hoss Tool. And I'm gonna say a musaki. Now I don't know if that's correct, but that's the way I'm pronouncing it being a southerner. Uh, but we have our two rows here in the fortified pen. Uh, we just got through doing a little watering this morning because we missed the rain the other day that they said was coming. We didn't get it, uh, which in a lot of ways is a blessing because we was able to finish doing a lot of our gardening stuff that we were doing. But this is our fortified cage for sweet potatoes, guys. I'm not sure if anybody's ever seen anything like this, but it is what it is. When you got a lot of deer pressure, you got to do what you got to do. Now we are going to be actively using the bone sauce here. Um, it's worked perfect on the other parts of the garden. Uh, as a matter of fact, I come in the driveway the other day and there were deer standing on the other side of the driveway out in the woods, but they had not been over here. So the bone sauce, all I can say is it has to be working because they haven't been in here. But y'all know me when it comes to sweet taters because I got I like my sweet taters. I'm not taking a chance on sweet potatoes. I, I, I've got ribbons tied all over the property. We've got bone sauce out. Um, I've decided to put the fortified cage here because I'm all about sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes is a superfood. It's one of the best cancer fighters out there. And I want to make sure I have as many different varieties of them growing as I can because these have the purple skins. Now, I haven't done the research on it, but I'm gonna bet you that they're loaded with anthrocyanins which is a great cancer preventer. Um, so guys, go check out Hoss Tool too, because they got a lot of sweet potatoes in right now and you might want to get you some before it's too late. The stand up planter here at Pecan Grove is doing amazing. Um, look, even got little bugs in here. I'm not sure if that's a beneficial, it looks like a ladybug. Danny can tell me in a minute if it is or not. But we have lots of zinnias that came up volunteer in this. This was dirt that had been used before. Then I have a lot of borage. And some of it, I think, is fixing to bloom right here. The zinnias are fixing to bloom. So we're fixing to see what we've got here. The borage is starting right there. Danny's watering it right quick. Um, not sure what this is right here. So if anybody knows, they can tell me on that one. But we have cilantro popping up in here. We have some kale here. And we have kale here on this side. And we've already harvested some out of here, out of the kale. So it looks like borage and the zinnias are the biggest things that are going to make it in the kale. Uh, everything else is kind of getting drowned it out right now, so we're going to see if anything makes it besides the borage and the zinnias in the stand-up planter. Okay, we got our little ladybug here. So, so Danny's going to put her back. Yeah, I'm going to put her back. On this side is a little bit of shard, which has made it, and then here... Somewhere with some more shard, rainbow shard. Rainbow shards down there. They just hadn't gotten very big because it's getting shaded out. I found one of my chives, my onion chives, up in the middle of everything. So I transplanted it over here in the space where nothing was really growing. We're going to see. And I think there's another onion chive in there somewhere. If I find it, I'm going to move it out here in this spot. Ooh, okay, guys. <laughs> we went ahead and... In here where we dug our taters up, we planted two rows of pink-eyed purple hulls right ahead of what we thought was going to be a rain the other day, which did not happen. And see how it's uh, all still dry? We're going to have to get a little rain on it, looks like, before the peas start popping through. And then we still got our taters over here. We hadn't dug them yet. Uh, they're still holding in. Uh, I don't know how much longer they'll go, but for these cool mornings we're having, 
they may stick in there and stay for a pretty good while. But then now we still have our onions. We was thinking these were not going to make any bulbs, but guys, these things are, uh, they making some pretty big looking bulbs on them there. They're about three inches. Some of them. Now look. these are the ones that I planted. We got in February. Yeah, these was the ones that they brought to the store. And I was kind of joking with them. I said, man, I said, you don't need planting these things this time of year, but we took some to plant anyway. And these were planted probably a week and a half ahead of the other ones down here. But they are, uh, they're all doing, I think, was these the 1015s? I don't remember which was which. I think these might have been the 1015s. Let me get a little bit of dirt out around them there because we want them to have every opportunity that they can. And then we have some purple ones. Yeah, the purples are on down here. And the purple ones was in really bad shape. I mean, I, I really started not to even plant them because I said these are not going to make it. But they looked almost dead. They making... They're doing okay. Let's put it this way. They'll color the salad whenever you get ready to make a salad out of it or put them on a burger or whatever. They'll color it anyhow. And here, guys, is some elephant garlic that we found on the property, just growing in sporadic places around the property. We taken and brought it out here to the garden designated a place right here to put it so that we would have it from you know from now on right here because the corms will break off into the soil and they'll actually stay there for years to come and we're just going to go ahead and designate this part of the garden for that because it's at the end of the blueberry row we got blueberry trees down through the garden here and we really will never really be plowing this part of it so it's going to make a good divider and when we take the onions out to the left right here we're probably going to bring some of our multiplying onions back over here from Deep South Homestead and put them in this spot and just leave this area designated for multiplying onions and elephant garlic. decided to come down to the pond here at Pecan Grove and just chill out here on the pier. We finished it yesterday and uh, I think it's pretty awesome. It's uh, 12 feet wide, 32 feet long. It's got room enough once the fish y'all get in here for the, all the grandkids to fish and uh, got a place to put some chairs here. We're going to get ready and all that. I think Juan and I is just going to chill out here for a little while and take our break right here at Pecan Grove. Thank you guys.